And welcome back, folks. Today, we have had Strixhaven finally revealed to us the five colleges, the names and artwork in one of the cards of the five older dragons, more planeswalkers as we've seen here, and a whole bunch more. So let's get into it. So first and foremost, one of the big thing, first things they actually revealed was the fact that, obviously, Rowan, Scholar of Sparks, and Will, Scholar of Frost, are are on this way. Now, we knew these guys were going to be on this plane because we saw it in the um, in the box artwork. I think it's uh, Booster Packs. Uh, the booster, uh, the bo the draft box is uh, had their artwork on them. We also assumed because we knew uh, double faced uh, modular, uh, double faced cards were going to be a set that the way they are going to integrate Will and Rowan into the set is by having them be a module because their their sparks are connected. So it may, would make sense that you're again you're pushing the module double faced cards in a new war, uh, frame. We had a creature turn into a Planeswalker with Tybalt last set. It makes sense that you'd have a two-faced Planeswalker here. And as such, because they're module, module cards are designed to work with their other hat. You're designed to be able to have multiple copies of them in your deck and then be able to play both halves if you need to. So they're designed to work together. So Rowan Scholar of Sparks is a one red, two of any color, legendary Planeswalker Rowan. Instant sorcery spells you cost, cast one less to cast. Plus one. This card deals one damage to each opponent. If you draw three or more cards this turn, it deals three damage to each opponent instead. You can or you can minus four, you get an emblem. With whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may pay two of any color. And if you do a copy of that spell, you may choose a new target for that copy. So honestly, I mean for a three amount of planeswalker, she's okay. Honestly, what you're probably gonna be getting the most benefit out of is that first ability, just do some ping damage, and if you're able to draw cards. Uh, you know, get some three in there. It's not going to be anything amazing. It's not going to be able to kill creatures either. But also to lower the cost of your instants and sorcery spells is not terrible in the least. And then you have Well, Scholar of Frost. Now this also kind of tells us, I believe, that these two are probably actually going to be both Prismari. They're going to be, uh, because the elements are a big uh, key factor of the Prismari uh, college. You, they're um, elemental manipulators. And both these characters manipulate lightning and ice respectively. Uh, Will Scholar of Frost is one blue, four of any color for a four mono, uh, four loyalty planeswalker. Now, I find this interesting because and he has three abilities, which implies that between the two siblings, he's actually the stronger sibling. Th if you think about that, really, because we had the, the the two of them separate uh, separately in Battle Bond, but it, that didn't really mean much in terms of compare and contrast. Then you had them together on their single card, uh, Royal Science, which I do have a copy of that card. Uh, and now you have, but now you have them individually, be it on the same card. And between the two, I mean, they both have the same actual ability. Instants and sorceries cost one less to cast, but he always starts out with more loyalty. He's also harder to cast, takes more mana to play in, which implies more mana usually implies stronger abilities because you have to pay more to get those stronger abilities. But plus one, up to one target creature you control has a base power, or to me, target creature, not you control, has a base power and toughness of zero and two until the end of the turn. Or you may draw two cards, which is what plays into her ability of if you drew three cards, do three damage. And then minus seven, exile up to five target permanents. For each permanent exile this way, its controller creates a 4-4 four, four blue and red elemental creature token. Which uh, Rosewater came out and said recently on Blogger Talk that this is the last time you're really going to see the Raven form uh, ability in blue. Because uh, he's, he's like, no, we really cracked down on it after Will. Like, no, we, don't, we're, we understand it's actually fairly broken for uh, not it's not a true break but it's either a strong bend or a actual break for blue um so yeah ultimately when you really look at these two even though one puts the emblem out which is pretty good you still got to pay the two to copy spells which does work for the magecraft ability which we'll talk about in a little while but ultimately i yeah if you're going by what these kind of represent in lore will's probably the stronger of the two with siblings in terms of how good this card is, well, it's obviously a card that gives you a lot of options if you're red and blue. I can certainly fit this into red and blue decks without too much difficulty. Uh, or red red and blue decks, or red blue decks is what I meant by that statement. Um, overall, I mean, I like this card. I don't know how good it is, ultimately, but I do like the card. We'll have to see how this card plays out later on. Uh, then we got, uh, you know, reveals a whole bunch of the showcases, or, you know, um, what we'll be seeing in the, uh, or the archives, if you will, we'll be seeing probably in the collector boosters and in the uh, alternate card frame arts, which like Duress, looks, I mean, Duress, Lightning Bolt, Time Warp. There's also the Japanese versions of these cards, which look fan freaking tasks. I mean, they're strictly in Japanese. They said that. 
but that doesn't mean I don't think you can find it. You can't find them in American. It's just that um, there's only Japanese versions of these cards, uh, which is still pretty cool. I remember Dia, a demonic, uh, there's Lightning Bolt. I remember Demonic Tutor is um, is also really awesome. It's like got an Oni and stuff on there. But now we actually get to the legit some of the legitimate cards we see in the set here. We have Dragon Guard Elite, which is one blue, uh, one green and listed with blue. One green, one of any color for a two-two human druid rare. Magicraft, Magecraft, which basically it's the same um, general ability. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, an effect activates. In this card's case, it's put a plus one counter on Dragon Guard Elite. Uh, you may pay two green and four of any color to double the number of plus one counters on this card. So it is a bear with upside. In fact, honestly, it's I don't ever see you playing the unless it's like late game. This thing is still managed to live. I don't see it playing the double the amount of plus one counters on it, but uh, I guess it's possible. The only problem is this card doesn't have any other abilities. It doesn't have trample. It doesn't have flying. It doesn't have evasion. It doesn't have hexproof. It doesn't have anything like that. You could probably give it that with an enchantment or some kind or an instant. I mean, there's instances that give, uh, you know, trample. Uh, there's uh, the tra uh, counters from uh, uh, Ikoria. Uh, which we also learned Luca is on this plane. He's the one planeswalker we haven't seen. Uh, we haven't seen. Uh, we know the other two, Kazmina and Professor Onyx, aka Liliana in disguise, uh, but we have not seen. Um, and those two are up here, I believe, somewhere. Is that right? Uh, yes, they're there. Well, there's Liliana. Uh, where is Kazmina? Uh, oh, that's odd. I would have thought. Okay, yeah, there's Liliana. I know Kazmina was shown on this site earlier. I will I'll find Kazmina later. Um, because Kazmina, I looked, I'm like, oh, I did not think Kazmina would be a Simic Walker. But thinking on what her kind of style of magic is, it actually makes 100% sense <laughs> she's a Simic Walker. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, it's a fun, I mean, as a bear, it's great. Because you're, realistically, as long as you got some, maybe like a one drop or something like that, instant or sorcery, no matter what it is, you'll get it to three in turn two, or like turn three the minute you play it. Assuming you play it on turn three. Uh, assuming there are no zero-costing instants or sorcerers in the set, which, if there are, oh god. But, um, yeah, ultimately, um, ultimately, yeah, I, I'd say it's okay. It's a perfectly reasonable card. Archmage, um, um, Ametris is two blue, two of any color for a two-two human wizard magecraft, except this time you just draw a card when you magecraft, which... Is arguably a lot better than this. It's going to get you a lot more value a lot quicker, certainly, especially if you're in a primarily blue deck which uses instances and sorceries very often. So, I can definitely give the, I, I definitely see that one working out. Um, you had Eager First Year, which is one wa one white, one blue of any color for a two two human wizard with magecraft. When you cast an instant or sorcery, you get plus one plus one until the end of turn. Basically, the eager overzealous trying to get ahead quick kind of a character. Um, I mean, it's reasonable. Again, it all depends on what spell you're playing. I think that's a big thing here, is that what spell are you playing? What instant or sorcery spell are you playing? Because, I mean, it could be... It could be... It could be, um, a lot better than it looks, or it could not... It could be a lot worse than it looks, depending on what's available to you. Professor of Symbology. <laughs> uh, it's symbolism, but whatever. Um, a language isn't dead until you stop learning from it. Uh, one white, one of any color for a 2-1 core cleric. So there are cores on this plane too. And there are merfolk we find out. There's actually a lot of species on this plane, which is interesting. Uh, the professor of Symbology enters the battlefield and learn. Now this is very interesting because it's a new mechanic, basically. Basically, you have your lesson, you can have the lesson cards from outside the game and put them into your hand or discard a card and draw a card when you learn. So either you're you know, learning something by, you know, removing some knowledge, gaining new knowledge, or you take one of these lessons cards, like con Confront the Past, and add to your hand. I've heard some people compare it to kind of like Companion. It's not quite Companion, because Companion you can just cast from outside the game. Uh, not, you confront the Past, you just put it into your hand. But as far as I can tell, you can still play these cards as is in your deck. There's nothing that says you can't. So in a case of Confront the Past, which is clearly, which doesn't say story spotlight, but it's clearly kind of a story spotlight, I imagine. One black, red, one black ex, um, mana for a story, a sorcery lesson rare. Choose one. Target, uh, return target planeswalker card from with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, or remove twice X loyalty counters from target planeswalker and opponent controls. So this is 
Okay, see, not, uh, first off, that's really freaking good, especially in your Planeswalker deck, or against Planeswalker decks, or just against Planeswalkers. But, obviously, given what's going on in this scene right now, are we implying Liliana's actually going to bring Gideon back from the dead? Or attempt to, at any rate? And in which case, if he's brought back, what is he going to be like now? Because we look at Elspeth. Elspeth was still a white planeswalker, even though she came back from the underworld. But she, uh, but Theros' death is very different than death on other planes. Gideon died on uh, Ravnica being incinerated. I don't know if you can bring him back so easily. <laughs> Um, so it's interesting. It's a good card, though. Pop quiz, though. One blue, two of any color for an uh, instant common draw a card. Learn. Again, lesson card. Or you could just get an extra card by discarding a card. Uh, Time Warps, alternate art. Duress is alternate art. Looks awesome. Lorehold Apprentice. Now, the Apprentice are, I guess, basically kind of your guild mages of this, um, uh, of this set. Uh, they're two mana of, of their respective colors, but they all have magecraft. So the Lorehole Apprentice is Boros colors, or Lorehole colors in this case. I liked that too in the uh, in the um, introduction video, you know, the the reveal video where he does a Boros skin new stuff, and the guy just goes, "What the fuck is Boros?" You know, this is Lorehole. <laughs> it's like, sorry, sorry. Uh, but two, two, they're all two twos, and they all have magecraft. With the Lorehole one. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell until the end of turn, spirit creatures you control gain, tap this card, and gain deal one damage to each opponent. There's definitely things you could do with that. Um, it's going to matter how many spirits uh, Red Blue in this set uh, is able to actually make. Uh, but, I mean, it, could, it might encourage me to make a Red Blue spirit deck, certainly. Um, Oregon, the, or, now this guy's a commander card, so I'm not going to really spend much time on him, but 4-4 four, four for 4, 2 bo uh, Boros color, and 2 of any color, Vigilance, already he's playable, basically he focuses on sacrificing artifacts, I like his X ability, where you actually exile an artifact, with like two copies, token to copies of the artifact, that's pretty good, especially if you got like some really awesome equipments on the field that aren't legendary, you can get some fun out of that. Uh, Prismari Apprentice, though, is 2 blue, 2-2, two, two, Magecraft. They're all human clerics, uh, or shamans, apparently, or shamans slash clerics. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, I'm gonna stop repeating that part, but whenever you Magecraft, this card cannot be blocked, and if the spell that you, ha if the spell that you did this with had value, um, mono, converted mana cost, I'm so used to saying that, mana value of 5 or greater, you put a plus 1 count on this card. So this one is actually a bit of a clock. If you got some spells that you can really work with that. Um, otherwise, he's just going to become a significant, you know, problem for your opponent. Especially if you pump him and make him unblockable. That He's going to become a problem. He's going to become a very big problem. Um, Storm, so I like that one a lot. Uh, Storm Kin Artisan is one red, three of any color for a two, a two dwarf shaman. Uncommon. Uh, gets plus one, plus oh until, for each artifact you control. And you magecraft create a treasure token um so we also had a reveal of a new keyword ward which is basically when this creature becomes targeted uh the spell that targeted it gets countered unless um you know they pay too so that's a new keyword i'm wondering though have treasure art i don't know for certain have treasure art tokens become um evergreen at this point because every set i can think of for uh, i think since i want to say core has had treasure. I, I believe Battle for Zendikar had it. No, Battle, Zendikar Rising, sorry. Zendikar Rising, I know um, uh, Kalheim just had it. Storm, and now we have it in the, um, Strixhaven. I would, I'm damn certain we're going to see it in the, um, uh, uh, we're going to see it in the Dungeons & Dragons set. Uh, so the only question will be, if it's in Innistrad, that basically um, would confirm for me. That the word that's pretty much a uh, keyword at this point, or evergreen. But um, yes, all of this is for your artifact deck. This is a really good card because it's gonna you know keep pumping up, uh, pumping out um, tokens. He's gonna keep getting stronger, and if you're in a token deck or artifact deck already, then it's gonna work out amazingly. Quandrix Apprentice, my color, my favorite color combination, green blue. Uh, though I'll maybe be honest, I don't know. I'm torn somewhere between. Uh, Prismari, Witherbloom, and, uh, and uh, Quandrix in terms of what um, uh, college I would be in. 
Uh, but again, Magecraft. In this case, when you Magecraft, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal, may reveal, bleh, may reveal a land card from among them and put them into their hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So this one's going to search out your land. Great for you know activating land war, uh, landfall, all that. Um, yeah, I, I, I like this. This, this is fine. It's not. I wouldn't say it's actually the best one. Surprisingly, although if you're looking to ramp, it could be definitely be the best one. Um, then we have Silver Coil Apprentice, again, same issue, um, Silver Coil Colors, 2-2. Two, two. When you Magecraft this one, creatures you control get plus 1, uh, plus 0 oh until the end, oh, sorry, target creature you control gets plus 1, plus 0 oh until the end of turn. All depends on what you want to pump up. We have Inklings in this set now, which is pretty in uh, entertaining, so that could be interesting. And then there's Wither Bloom Apprentice, who I think is the most basic of them. Actually, Silver is probably the most basic. Each opponent loses one life, and you gain li one life when you Magecraft. This one also would be a clock, though. This one you're going to have to pay attention to if it's on the field and it's against you, because the more they activate stuff, the more you're going to lose, the more uh, they're going to gain. If they have multiple copies of these guys on the field, that's another thing, too. We have to remember that these things can stack. And stacking is dangerous. Uh, again, I wouldn't say... I'd say Silver Coil is actually probably the least dangerous uh, in terms of that. Maybe Lorehole as well, just because you need creatures on the field to make those function properly. But the Prismari, depending on if you're um, playing big spells, uh, that could stack. And that could stack... If you have four of them on the field and you play one, that's eight damage you're getting through minimum. Uh, even more if they're already pumped up. This guy's going to get you multiple land if you got it stacked. And this guy's going to drain life and gain life quick. So, yeah, if they stack, you've got a serious problem on your end. You have these Snarls, which is basically a point in the plane where these two opposing mana converge. Kind of like a Nexus point. Uh, and basically, they're, they're, re they're the revealed card type, like in this case for the Simic one. Uh, and I'm just going to call it Simic one. Uh Reveal a force or an island from your hand to be able to play this out uh, untapped. Otherwise, it comes out tapped. And that's fine. I actually never had a problem with it. Some of the artwork is fantastic. The artwork's fantastic. Look at, I mean, Love, Frostbow. Honestly, even though of the three color combinations, I'd argue black and white. It's either black and green, surprisingly, or black and white are my least favorite. The black and white one looks awesome. Like, I want to see that thing foiled, man. Oh, so good. Waterfall Aerialist. Air mm, Aerialist. One blue, one of three of any color for a three one flying jinn wizard ward two. Again, when this creature uh, becomes the tar target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter it unless that player pays two. Now, that being said, it actually has a number there. So, my guess is ward might actually have higher or lower counter points. Counter, um, if that makes sense, uh, counter requirements. So, we might see like a ward three or a ward one in some other cards. So far, we've only seen ward two though. So we also have the Deans. Uh, now, this one isn't a Dean. This one's actually a different card. This is Torrent Sculptor, which is a two blue, two of any color, Merfolk Wizard. And we also have Merfolks on this plane. Now, it's hard to tell in this um, picture, uh, particularly because I can only make it so big. But Merfolks look kind of different on this plane compared to other planes. So Torrent Sculptor, two, two, two blue, two of any color. Again, Ward 2. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, exile instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. Put a number of plus one counters on Torrent Sculptor. Equal to half that card's mana value, round it up. There's also Flamethrower Sonata. I like to like that name. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Discard a card and then draw a card. When you discard an instant or sorcery card this way, this card deals damage equal to that card's mana value to a target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Uh, I do find answering too that um, there isn't creature or the name here under the... Uh, it just has sorcery and then wizard. In this case, merfolk wizard. I do find it interesting. Obviously, again, because they're module cards, they're supposed to work together if you have both copies. In the Flamethrower Sonata's case, this is going to put the large, hopefully the large spell in your graveyard. So when you play Torrent Sculptor, you're going to be able to buff it up. My problem with Torrent Sculptor is that besides the fact it's harder to counter or get rid of, um, well, more or less harder to get rid of and target, it doesn't do anything except possibly get a little bigger. So that is my, that is my complaint against Torrent Sculptor. Uh, first day of class is whenever a one red, one of any color, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control this turn, it gets plus one, plus one, encounter on it, and gains haste until the end of turn, and then you learn. Uh, and, and you could get something like Expand Anatomy, which actually, you know, I mean, don't you can't play it unless you got the mana for it, but put two plus one counters on target creature, it gains vigilance until the end of turn, and it uh, is colorless, which actually I think is very, um, very notable that it is a colorless spell. 
and it's not the only colorless spell. We also have, um, oh yeah, we have two introduction to uh, prophecy and introduction to annihilation. Um, so there are the fact that our color spells here kind of, I think is your key that it, and flavor wise, it means that anyone can learn these spells and to kind of figure out where their identity is. There is another lesson that was revealed that wasn't put up on this site. And I like to go to mythic spoiler now more than I like to go to the, uh, MTG salvation. Cause they're a lot more current with their spoilers. Um, called, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a hybrid black and green with one, um, black and green one extra mana, uh, basically it put two pest creature tokens out, which is a new creature type, which is the mascot of the Witherbloom, that when they die, they enter the, they, you gain a life, uh, which honestly, that's not bad, it's making two bodies that when they die, they do something, I like that, as for these two cards, first day of class, perfectly reasonable, honestly, plus one counter and haste, that's actually not bad, not, not amazing, but it's not bad, and then expand anatomy, that's actually, for three mana, you get a permanent two buff and vigilance for the turn, as long as the creature didn't come out that turn, and or doesn't have haste, you're good. Uh, then you have the Dean of Chaos and the Dean of, where's the other one? Come on, there it is. Dean of Chaos and Deal of Order, or Deal of Order, Dean of Order. A Farg, who is an orc shaman, and Augusta, who is a human cleric. Uh, now, Farg is one red, one of any color for a 2-2 two -two Orc Shaman. Tap, discard a card, draw a card. Pay four and one red, tap. Reveal, eat, reveal uh, cards on top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary, non-land card with mana value three or less. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put all reveal cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library in any random order. Augusta, Dean of Order... Is other tapped creatures you control get plus one plus oh. Other untapped creatures you control get plus oh plus one. It's a one three, and whenever you attack, untap each creature you control, and then tap any number of creatures you control, and then tap any number of creatures you control. So basically, you can choose not to tap anything if you want to. Uh, now I'll admit this one, the, the relationship between the two of them is a bit more. It's a bit harder for me to pin down. What I think the ultimate relationship, how they're supposed to work together, is the fact that you can tap. The, um, the Flarg here, or, or, yeah, Plarg, and, you know, get the abilities off this card and draw, or, you know, search and find something and play it. And then, when something attacks, thanks to Augusta, you can untap him again. So I think that's how that's supposed to work. In terms of how good the cards are, actually, I think they're both fairly good. You're getting buffs on in one way or another here, uh, getting a buff to your toughness, or um, tap... Cre I don't under quite understand how the... T I mean, yes, when they... That's the thing. When they're attacking, they tap unless they have vigilance. So that does make sense how they get the boost there. Um, so okay, yeah. Now let's say it out loud. That does make a bit more sense. Um, ultimately, though, yeah, I like these guys. I I've always liked red white. When when you play outside red or white's normal box, like I don't love the standard Boros guild, but I'm not against the Boros guild either. Uh, Professor Onyx, a.k.a. Liliana in disguise, two black, four of any color, Magecraft, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Five loyalty. Plus one, you may, you lose one life, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the other, the rest in your graveyard. Uh, each opponent sacrifices their creature with the greatest power among creatures, uh, yeah. Each opponent sacrifices their creature with the greatest power among creatures, uh, that player controls. So basically, you get them to sacrifice their strongest guy. And then, minus eight, each opponent may discard a card. If they don't, they lose three life. Repeat this process six more times. So, in essence, if they've got very little in their hand, you're probably going to take them out with that ability if you get to it. But honestly, the first two abilities also are fantastic. And frankly, you don't, as long as this thing survives, Magecraft alone is going to be able to, um, uh, going to be able to, you know, do a lot of damage to your opponent. So I am, I'm all for the Liliana, or excuse me, Professor Onyx. Uh, then we have Shadrick Silvercoat, the first of our Elder Dragons to be revealed. By the way, there, there is alternate art for the, let's get a look at this thing real quick. Let's get a look at this alternate art. Ooh, one second. Oh, yeah, look at that. I mean, the, the other art is pretty cool too. It's like actually like ink coming off them, but look at this. This is gorgeous. Oh my God. God, I love this art. Uh, now, I'll be honest, I did my prediction on the Elder Dragons um, a few weeks, like two or three weeks ago, so I don't remember exactly what I predicted. Um, but I now, now looking at this, I'm guessing this is going to be how the overall uh, feel of the dragons play out, where they have modular effects 
and you got to choose a certain amount of them. Plus, they'll have extra abilities. In his case, Cedric Silverquill, uh, one black, one white, three of any color, two five, Elder Dragon creature, mythic, uh, flying with double strike. Uh, when, at the beginning of combat each turn, you may choose two. Each uh, each mode must target a different player. Now, target player uh, creates a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. Target player draws a card and loses a life, or target player puts a plus one counter on each creature they control. Now, I find this actually very interesting because it now it, it, you must choose two and it must... You must choose two of the effects, and each one of them must choose a different player. So you actually have to be very careful attacking with this card, because you do not want to necessarily give them, say, a uh, an ink, a creature, and then lose your dragon. Or you don't want to be able to, you don't want them to sell a game cards when they're already ahead on cards. Or you don't want, or you, it's actually very, very, or you don't want them to pump up their creature so they'll be having an easier time blocking your creature. It's actually a very unique ability. Now that being said, in a multiplayer game, like oh, like oh, you say two at a giant. Oh, these this guy's, duh, oh no, this you're you're done. You broke the game's broken at that point in two at a giant, because <laughs> uh, you're in it's a team battle at that point. Like oh yeah, I got my teammate here. He's a separate player. Let's just do this. Yeah, that's 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 kind of messed up. Uh, we have also Olvidal. D R. Uh, Uvidal, yeah, Dean of Perfection, and Nasari, Dean of Expression. Now, these are the Prismari Deans, and this video is probably going to go on for a while, because I'm not even, like, done, I'm hardly done yet. Um, so, Uvidal is a Jin, uh, Jin wizard. It's a genie. Uh, though I honestly would not have predicted that looking at her, uh, and I, and I can't say for certain to her, but I, it does look similar to her. 2-2 two, two for 3 mana, 1 blue. Tap, you may exile an instant or sorcery card from your hand and put three hone counters on it. It gains at the beginning of your upkeep. This card is exiled, remove a hone counter from it, and when the last hone counter is removed, if it's exiled, you may cast it. It costs four or less to cast. I'm sorry, Dean of Expression, two red, three of any color, four, four. At the beginning of your upkeep, an Ifrit Shaman. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, exile a top card of each, uh, each opponent's library. Until, um, until the end of your turn, you may cast spells from among those uh exiled and you may spend mana as though a mana of any color whenever you cast a spell from exile put a plus one counter on this card which makes sense going uh basically being uh entwined with uh uvid um uvida uh so i mean these ones i'll admit these ones i'm not um uh i'm not as thrilled about those ones if i'm gonna be honest uh, quickly on the, on the, uh, colorless, uh, introduction, uh, colorless lessons. Introduction of Prophecy is three of any color for scry two and draw a card. That's, pr that's just fine. Uh, Introduction to Annihilation is Exile Target Non-Land Permanent. It's Controller draws a card. That, for common, uh, uh I mean, it's sorcery, so it is t uh, tempered a little bit, but at common... Yeah, that's actually really good. <laughs> because you're basically going to be able to exile anything. Except that, except the land. But you pretty much no one really tries to do like land destruction anymore. Uh, Kion, Dean of Substance. Uh, this is the uh, Quandrix Deans. And Ibrahim, Dean of Theory. Now these, this one I particularly like. Again, I'm a green-blue guy, so maybe I'm a little impartial. One green, two of any color for a 2-2 elf druid. Exile top card of your library. If it's a land, put it in your hand. Otherwise, put a study counter on it. You can then pay, or not then, but you can pay one, four of any color, one green. Create a 0-0 zero, zero green and blue fractal creature token. That is their particular, uh, um, uh, particular, um, uh, mascot. Their, their special creature type. Put a plus one counter on it for each different mana value among non-land cards you own in exile with study counters on it. So if you have at least three or four different, uh, you know, things exiled with different mana costs, you're making four fours easy. Uh, Ibram, Dean of Theory, uh, by the by, is two blue, for three, uh, two of any color for a three, three flying blue uh, a wizard legendary creature. Pay X and two blue, tap exile top X cards of your library and put a study counter on each of them. Then you may put a card uh, you own in exile with a study counter on it into your hand. This is, see, this is one where it's to so obvious how these two play together. And I love how they play together because 
Honestly, you never have to use her ability, her first ability ever, if you get this ability off first. You exile, let's say, five cards, and each of them, and a land counts for zero mana. Let's be clear about that. Um, for each different mana value, a land has zero. So if you can, you can get lands in there without you having to worry about, you know, them going, well, uh, if it's a land, put it back in your hand, you have to. So that way you can get some land there for the extra mana cost. It's, yeah, it's, um, I, I like, the, I really like the symmetry between these two, and they're actually among the cheaper of the Deans to play. So yeah, I really like these guys. Uh, now, to be fair, you're really going to want to play them together, although she, uh, between the two of them, the green one's a little easier to play on its own, uh, if you don't have more than one copy. Um, then you have the um, Witherbloom Deans, if uh, you will, come on, come on. Uh, come on, come on, okay, let's move on then to the, so, oh, yeah, nothing's responding now, great, okay, come on, <sighs> there it is, uh, Shelly, uh, Dean of Radiance, and Ambrose, Dean of Shadow, uh, one white, one of any color for a legendary bird cleric, one one, flying vigilance, you can tap, put a plus one counter on each creature that enters the battlefield under your control this turn. Um, I mean, th see, this is interesting. You could attack with this and then maybe play a creature and then, pop and then pump them when they come out. That's pretty cool. Uh, and the Ambrose Dean of Shadow is 4-4 four, four for two black and two of any color. Tap, put a plus one counter on another target creature. And then this card deals two damage to that creature. Whenever a creature you control dies, uh, with a plus one counter on it dies, draw a card. So obviously they work on putting plus one counters on each other. They work in tandem that way. Now, is that going to ultimately work? Um, I don't know. This guy is pretty weak, the uh, the white one. So I can't say for certain if that will work. But uh, now, come on, give me my Witherbloom. There we go. A Valenti Dean of the Vein. Ooh. Uh, is a vampire warlock, legendary creature, 1-1, one, one, menace, lifelink, 1 black. So you can get down turn 1. If a non-token creature your opponent controls would die... Exile it, and when you do, you may pay two. If you do, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token that when it dies, you gain one life. And there is also a Lisette, Dean of the Root. Two green, two of any color for a 4-4, four, four, human druid. Wherever you gain life, you may pay one. And if you do, put a plus one counter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain trample at the end of turn. Now, long term, you, like, I do like this for big boards and all that. Unfortunately, both of these guys do need creatures on the field, particularly for Valentin or, or Valentin. Um, you need a non-token creature and you're probably not going to get the, even though he's a turn one creature, um, you're not going to get that turn one most of the time. Um, so while I do like them, they're only great in the board states that they're in. So yeah, I think that is pretty much it for most of the new Okay. We do. Oh yeah. There's a, different art for the Archmage. Lots of, uh, like, Urza's Rage, Growth Spiral, Cross on a Grip. Great. It's some great, uh, great alternate arts. Uh, now, their last one to talk about, obviously, is, wah! And that's someone in the, uh, I think that's, oh, no, that's, Mar and that's Mario's, uh, uh, someone's talking about the uh, teaser Mario did. Now, with, last but not least, we need to talk about, obviously, there it is, Cosmina the Enigma Sage. Uh, now, when I saw her, I'm like, I didn't think she was going to be a Simic. And then I thought of it more, and I'm like, well, to be fair, she was, like, transmuting stuff, which would be a very green-blue ability to begin with. Um, so, I mean, Kazmina Enigma uh, uh, Sage. One blue, one green, one of any color for a two loyalty Planeswalker. Each other Planeswalker you control has the loyalty abilities of Kazmina. Now, that alone is huge. Because that means all these abilities she has, they have as well. Plus two, scry one. Not that great, but when you're talking about, like, my, just the War of the Spark complete minus Planeswalkers with no plus abilities, that changes the rules a bit. Then you X, you put a zero, a zero green and blue fractal creature token uh, into play. Put a X plus one counters on it. Again, let's say you put a Kiora out here, uh, get it up by one, it's already got seven, nine, you, you like, just take out a bunch of it and it goes into eight then you make it an 8-8 eight, eight right from the get. Like, that's, that's good. Uh, and then minus 8, you can search your library for an instant or sorcery card that shares a color with the, this Planeswalker. Exile that card, then shuffle. You may cast this card without paying its mana cost. That's really only great if you have a blue or green card or, you know, any, another car, creature, Planeswalker, 
Basically, and it's sorcery that fits the planeswalker you're casting it with. So that one, I'll admit, that one's less impressive. But still, it's... I, I frankly would not be playing this card for its uh, final ability. I'd be playing this card more for its other abilities. Uh, honestly, the X and the plus two, and particularly its static ability. Though That's what I would be playing with. Uh, but maybe I'm playing it, thinking about playing it wrong. Well, how would you play it? Either way, that is the first previews of Strixhaven uh, School of Mages. I, look, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so far, I'm seeing nothing that tells me I won't be getting a, a booster box of this again, or draft box. Um, especially some of the alternate art, the legendary, uh, again, the Elder Dragons, their eyes, we've seen the artwork from, they look awesome. Uh, so I, I, I'm looking forward to it, but what do you think? Maybe you're not looking forward to it. Maybe you loved it. Maybe you hated what you saw. Let me know in the comments below, but thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, if you want to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know we'll do a review of it at some point. And ideas for win, Star Wars, Superior Magic, what if, anything to do on the channel. Put that in the comments below as well, get that at some point. So I got a who would win to do, and I'll be done for the day. So have a good one, folks, and later.